This is Dr. Howard Strassler speaking to you about the importance of light curing for improved clinical success with our restorative dentistry. We're light curing many different things today in our practices. Adhesive, restoration, sealants, veneers, inlays, onlays, fiber posts, gosh, the list goes on and on. And when you look at the majority of directly placed restorations, our composite resins, over 130,000 dentists placed, over 122 million restorations, not to include the veneers that are placed, the orthodontic brackets that are placed, all using light curing. Gosh, that's a, an incredible number of restorations. And when you look at technique articles, what do they say? And then you light cure. Is that enough? Well, the problem is we're not curing lights, uh, curing restorations completely. We're seeing lower bond strengths, increased microleakage, increased recurrent caries, increased staining, color changes, increased wear. In fact, we're seeing premature restoration failure. So when you look at techniques for light curing success, it really is a number of different things that we need to do. When you take a look and understand the energy that we're delivering, the lights themselves, that there are techniques. Use orange blue blocking glasses or shields. Inspect the light tip guide to make sure that it doesn't have any cured composite on it or it's not uh, damaged. Reposition the patient for better access to light curing and to see what you're light curing. Stabilize the light when curing. The tip of the light needs to be as close to the tooth as possible that we're restoring, as well as the tip should be at right angles to the tooth. Increase curing time for larger restorations for proximal boxes of class twos. And as we increase our curing time, air cool the tooth in restoration to minimize any pulpal effects. Keep in mind, not all light curing lights are the same and you need to understand some of these differences to have clinical success. First, irradiance across these lights may not be uniform. In fact, in this image right here, we're looking at a beam profile. The light is measured at 1200 milliwatts per centimeter squared, but there are hot and cold spots. There are peaks at over 5800 milliwatts per centimeter squared, but other areas are only at under 400. And so, those differences make a significant difference in curing all the aspects of the composite restoration. In fact, when we look at three different uh, curing lights, look at the variety of beam profiles. Keep in mind, red is the highest energy, uh, blues and violets are low energy. And so these lights will measure very high, but they give different beam profiles, hot and cold spots. In fact, if we were to overlay a very high energy light at over 1800 milliwatts per centimeter squared, it's all in the middle like a laser pointer. And in fact, we are not curing the margins of our restoration with this curing light. And that's what hot and cold spots mean to our restorations. The distance in light curing has an impact. Here we have a light that's measured at 1400 milliwatts per centimeter squared, and as we go down into our proximal box, at the gingival margin, our margin most at risk for recurrent decay, the power drop-off, the, the energy drop-off has been significant that we're looking at its, at the gingival margin, 600 milliwatts per centimeter squared. You have a lower energy delivering light at 1,000 milliwatts per centimeter squared. That gingival margin now is below 400. Distance ma matters. Orientation of the light matters. As right angles to the restoration, as close to the tooth as possible. In fact, when you take a look at this curing light, the matrix band is holding it out of the way. We're over two millimeters away from the cavo surface margins. So the matrix band has an impact. We as an operator can control what we're curing. Uh, a light that has a tip of 7.5 millimeters may be able to cure a premolar, but not the entire occlusal surface of a molar. The same holds true for central incisors when compared to lateral incisors. And so light does matter. Our techniques do matter. And so understanding leads to clinical success. Know your light. Know the energy your light delivers. 
know what the composite requires, use good techniques, stabilizing the light, orange blue blockers as close as possible at right angles to the restoration, at all of these things matter. Increase your curing time as you're further away from the light source. All of these will lead to improved clinical success. And so understanding, knowing the light, leads to improved clinical success. This was Howard Strassler talking to you about importance of light curing for improved clinical success.